In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a bench hook. I have no idea what these crazy things really are all used for, but I do know that because I've got some hand saws coming in the mail from Rob Cosman, that I'm gonna need it for cross-cutting pieces to length and maybe doing some shoulders on tenons. If you know some other uses for bench hooks, write those down in the comments for me. But for now, let's get to making this thing. I'm starting off with a piece of solid poplar that I just laminated together and it's 16 inches long by 12 inches wide, actually 11 and a half inches wide is all that I had. And we're just going to use a scrap piece to make the rear cleat and the fence for it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to divide this up into a 10 inch piece and about an inch and a half piece. So for the fence and the front cleat that's going to hold this against the front edge of the bench, we're just going to use another piece of scrap poplar and I want to get the milling marks off of it. It's approximately an inch and a quarter wide. You don't need it to be super, super wide or thick. We're not holding up the world with this and that'll be more than adequate for the actual purpose that it's going to serve. But you can kind of hear that plane skip across the jointer uh, and the planer mill marks. There, that sounds like a nice clean pass. And we'll do the edges as well because I did run those through the jointer to square them up. I guess we'll just check it for square. If you really wanted to make sure it was perfect, you could, I guess, run it through a shooting board. But I think we're close enough for what this is gonna be. It's gonna get beat up anyways. Now, I am gonna replace the 24 tooth ripping blade that I have in the table saw with a 60 tooth cross cut, just so we get a cleaner cut on the end of these cleat pieces. Most table saws come with a standard 40 tooth blade. It's kind of a general use type of a blade. But if you've never actually had a pair of ripping and cross cutting blades, I highly recommend you get them because it'll really make ripping a lot more efficient and cross cutting much cleaner. And it only takes a few quick moments to be able to switch these blades around. I always like to spin the blade when I'm done just to make sure that it's seated nice and flush on the arbor and it's not going to flutter or wobble. So the cleat that's actually going to hold the bench hook on the bench is going to be the same width as the actual shooting board at 10 inches. So we'll cut one piece here at 10 inches. Now we'll use this other little piece here to make an eight inch piece for the actual fence on the shooting board that we'll use to butt up our project pieces too when we're cutting them. Now I do want that actual fence on my bench hook to be 12 inches from the front edge. So let's just mark that off while we're kind of thinking about it here. And then I know where that placement's going to be. I'm gonna draw a bit of a line on here, but when I put that fence on there, I am gonna actually use the square to make sure that it stays square to the edge. Since we won't have good access to some of these edges, once it's assembled, I'm just going to ease them off a little bit with the block plane. Now the first piece we'll glue on is the cleat. We really don't need to be too crazy particular about this, but we're just gonna hold it in place for a couple moments until that glue tacks up. Okay, so while that glue dries on that front cleat, we're just gonna put 
some brad nails in and they're going to help make sure that our fence on this shooting board doesn't slide around on us. And I just marked out with a pencil lightly where the perimeter of that fence is actually going to be. Maybe we'll just put a third one in the middle. Why not? One way to ensure the cleat is actually square to the edge of the bench hook is to use a square. So that's what I'm doing here. Just make sure you've got it placed exactly how you want it before you tighten those clamps down. Okay, we'll just let that sit for a little while, let it dry, and then we'll be able to use it. So when you're cutting longer pieces to length, they're gonna wanna flutter or teeter sometimes. So if you remember for that base piece that we created for the bench hook, we cut a little strip off of it and I told you to save it. And the reason you save it is so that you can use that on your bench to have something the exact same thickness as your bench hook to balance that piece out so that you don't have to push down on that work piece while you're cutting something to length or sawing a tenon. So make sure you keep that little piece of scrap that you cut off your bench hook base. Until next time, go build something beautiful.